So you're working on a project and you need to download some assets from the internet. Easy, right? Let's take a material as an example. All you have to do is go to your favorite website, choose the asset you want to download, find the correct quality level, download the zip file, move the zip file to a better folder, extract the zip file to that folder, make sure that the contents of the zip file is okay, open up Blender, create a new material, add image nodes for the color, roughness, and normal maps and connect them up. But wait, there's also a bump map. Should I use that as well? The color's not quite right, so let's add an HSV node. And it should be a bit less rough, so we can add a gamma node in there as well. But how on earth do you use an ambient occlusion texture? Was it add or was it multiply? No, definitely multiply. And why is my displacement map not doing anything? Oh yeah, I forgot to change the cycle's displacement settings. That's it. Now was sRGB or non-color? What's the difference between a DX normal map and a GL one? Does the normal map need good luck? But anyway, it's a bit small, so let's add a mapping node and scale it up. Now it's tiling really badly, how on earth do I fix that? And now when I scale the texture, the displacement scale is wrong as well. Oh well, I'll figure it out later. And that's one material done. Easy. Only 20 more to go. <coughs> now, this obviously isn't ideal. And that's why I made AssetBridge, a Blender add-on that automates the process of downloading free assets from the internet, taking the process down from 100 clicks to just one. So, how much faster is it? Well, this much faster. Okay, okay, I apologise to your ears for that, but it was kind of cool, wasn't it? So, now it's going to be a wee bit calmer, and I'm going to go over how to actually use the add-on from start to finish, and then we'll have some tips and tricks for the end. So, let's get started. First up, installing the add-on. You've heard it a million times, but I'll say it again. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install, select the add-on zip, and enable it. Before we can use the add-on though, we first need to choose and set up the asset folder is where all of the downloaded files will be stored. For that reason, it's a good idea to choose somewhere that's unlikely to be moved, as that way we can avoid accidentally breaking the file links to your projects. I'd always recommend packing all of the external files into your project once you're done with it anyway, but this is just an easy way to avoid any problems if you don't do that. Now, to set up the folder we just selected as an asset bridge library, we can just click this button. On the surface, this looks pretty simple. But behind the scenes, the add-on is creating a blend file with an empty to represent each of the online assets. This allows them to be viewed in the asset browser, and when they are imported, the add-on automatically swaps them out for the newly downloaded asset. Okay, we're done with the setup now, and we can get into the fun bit, downloading assets using the add-on. To do that, all we need to do is head over to the asset browser and change the selected library to the one helpfully named Asset Bridge. From there, you can just find the asset you like, drag it into the scene, and voila, it will be automatically downloaded and imported for you. How long did that take? Like, 4 seconds? Now that's not too bad. Anyway, now that the asset has been imported, if we go over to the end panel, we can find a whole bunch of controls that you can change to get the asset looking exactly the way you want. For objects, you can adjust the normal map strength. For HDRIs, you can change the rotation, horizon height, colour and brightness. And finally for materials, you can change the colour, scale, rotation, and you also have access to some more advanced effects, such as anti-tiling and displacement. Okay, but now I can practically hear you shouting. But what if I want a higher level of quality than this one? Anything below 16k makes me sick. And to that I would say, you sound remarkably like me putting on a funny voice. But also, that's easy. When you're importing an asset, you can choose the import quality in the sidebar of the browser. And if you've already imported the asset, then you can just select the level of quality you want to change it to here in the end panel, and it will be automatically downloaded and replaced. And that's the main functionality of the add-on covered, so that means that it's time for some quick fire features. You can press this folder shape button to quickly open the download folder for the selected asset. If you have a burning desire to find out more about an asset, you can look in the info panel in the browser. It will tell you things such as which lovely person made the asset, how many downloads it has, when it was uploaded, 
and it even has a link to the site and where you can support them. Want to re-download an asset for some reason? Not a problem. Just press this button and re-download away. You can check for new assets by pressing this button in the preferences. If there are any to find, the previews will be automatically downloaded and added to the asset browser. Just like that. Do you want the add-on but also want to support the creators of the assets? Well, you're in luck. A portion of every sale goes directly to the creators so that they can keep on making more assets and you can keep downloading them. Currently, the add-on has access to over 2,700 assets from Polyhaven and Ambient CG. In the future, I'm hoping to add support for more websites as well. This concludes some quick fire features. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about Asset Bridge. There's a link to buy it in the description, and if you've got a question, you can ask me here, here, or here. Hope you like it. See ya.